Hey everybody, it's the last Robokai here, and welcome to Let's Play Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine. It's a third-person action slaughter game by Relic, made for THQ shortly before it went down the gurgler. It's got a very interesting production story, I suppose you could call it, in its creation. I'm the last Robokai, and joining me as always is... Yo dudes, it's Cool Guy, and... Just to make it clear, because a few people, a few people uh, who who were watching our last L LP made uh, made mention of this. Robokai is playing all of this. I am in the passenger seat this time. Yeah, this is one of those games that I really quite enjoy. I've gone back to it and finished it quite a few times. That'll come into play with a few interesting factoids about it as well. So let's just get stuck straight in because this game knows how to start a video game. Mm. Captain Titus, the Orcs have massacred the Forge World's forces, and they have taken the planetary defense weapons. Clever of the damned Orcs. Keeps us off their backs while they loot the Titan war machine. Brace for evasive maneuvers. Pilot, report! Starboard engine is dead, Sergeant. We are losing altitude. Get the ship to safety. We'll find another way down. Aye, Captain. This is your plan. We need to get to the surface to take out the gun battle. Or do you want to go home already, Sergeant? Not before having a word or two with the orcs. Is that wise, Captain? The Codex Astartes does not support this action. Try to keep up.
right after that amazing introduction, we get sucked straight in. Few games can start that can start their uh, their action by redefining the Halo maneuver. Let's just get to talk about the, the combat for a moment here. As you can see, we've only got a bolt pistol and a combat knife because we are the worst equipped Ultramarines ca champion in uh, chapter history. Uh, but it suffices quite easily for uh, just fighting Gretchen and Orc Sluggers. Oh, yeah, Orc Sluggers. Uh, the, the funny thing, of course, about uh, Gretchen in this game is being they're just tiny little, little green skin servants as that, well, they're, they're more like little health packs because. We'll, we'll get into the mechanic of that. The game actually explains it. But we've got a lot. We've got we've got a lot of attacks at our disposal already. When uh, when the enemy is glowing like that with the skull over the head, they're stunned. You can do an execution maneuver on them. That has actually has a really cool gameplay effect, which we'll be seeing shortly. Space Marines. And all of the all of the executions are a bit of the old ultra violence, and all of the executions are freaking incredible. I mean, I, I smile every time I see them. Look at that! That dude's head comes straight off because you stabbed it! Love it! Yeah, a uh, Space Marine combat knife ain't nothing to mess with. In the, uh, in Dark Heresy and Associated uh, games, normal people trying to wield a uh, Space Marine knife, it just does not work very well. It's designed to be able to plunge into someone's head with the force of a, uh, with the force of a power armored arm behind it. Get off my ship, Space Marine! There's our war boss. If there's one thing that I don't like about the war boss, and don't get me wrong, I like many things about him, it's that he he speaks altogether too smoothly for an orc. Yeah. Though, though you know, to be fair, that kind of does kind of does fit with the character of this particular orc, as uh, you know, the character will discuss later. He's very smart. The execution was not working there for some reason. <laughs> I'm like hitting ego. Come on, come on, guys. But, that one yeah, works. We didn't, we didn't say it, but executions restore health. There are no health packs in this game. You have a shield, but your health does not naturally regenerate. So this is this is a game that encourages you to get in and get killing. Of course, another important factoid to know is that when you're in an execution, you are not invincible. So you have to sort of pick your marks very well, or you may end up getting killed while doing that to somebody. Yup, that happened to me a lot when I first played this game. Yeah, it's a tricky thing to get used to. It's all these grenades. I think the uh, the war boss throws a few. The war boss does uh, does throw a, uh, throw a couple, and I don't know. Orcs just really like their stick bombs in this game. Oh yeah. We've just only just, only just entered the game, and already we've been introduced to like three standard enemy types: the Gretchen, Sluggers enjoy close combat, shooters enjoy range. Can't hurt him. Got you would range. love to, but uh, no such luck at this stage in the game. Fight him with a bolt pistol and a knife. I love this sequence. This is one of the most hardcore takedowns ever. And entirely in character with orcs, because why would you stop firing just because half of your ship has slowly, slowly drifted into view? And why the hell would you bother abandoning abandoning ship? You're hardcore enough to handle that shit. Mm -hmm. yeah, power armor can take a lot of abuse. See, Captain Titus knows his stuff. He even pauses for the for the title screen. As as en as entrance sequences go, that one really takes the cake. Damned orc shot me off course. I've had no word from Leandros, but I'm picking up Vox chatter from Imperial Guard forces on the ground. I scarcely thought anyone would be left alive, much less still fighting. Heading towards the front lines now. 
I will meet you there. And yeah, that's the gun that's shooting all the allied craft down, and that's a nice Mechanicus statue. Because we are on a forge world, and this is where they make all the fun weapons, tanks, uh, titans and toys that... Well, every every facet of Imperial life in the Warhammer 40,000 setting uses. If you want to get geared up for a war, there's no better place than a forge world. Except this one, because it's currently having the crap kicked out of it. Yeah, well... You don't have to shoot those guys, but, you know, infinite ammo on the ball. Why would you much. not? <laughs> Every every green skin still alive is a green skin that leaves its spores around. I like the way you think, brother. And uh, as is the uh, the trope of many games, audio logs. Workers, assemble. <sighs> Caleb, there you are. The Shiring brothers are saying we're under attack. The brothers are idiots, Lilith. They saw rocks in the sky. Seen us here. Damn them. Unlikely, but true. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's they're almost all exclusively backstory of events that led up to the arrival of the Space Marines. And we get our uh, first weapon upgrade. The Bolter. Now, anyone, anyone who knows their Space Marines should know the Bolter. This way, boys! I'm gonna kill it first! It's got a nice meaty sound to it, and every single shot is a tiny little grenade. Basically, it just explodes when it hits things. It's great for fighting orcs because it just blows big meaty chunks off them. That's seriously one of the one of the biggest pieces of um, of like background fluff that most people miss is that the bolters the bolters tit um, the bolters bolts are actually self propelled and explosive tipped. Mm -hmm. And also, this guy was not supposed to fall down. They're, they're like orcs above. They all sort of run around. Uh, you can shoot at them. Uh, I've never had that guy fall down before, and he wasn't really interested in, in uh, fighting or parlay, so there we go. I, I, I imagine he just got separated from the boys and was just like, eh. Boy, this was a really bad idea. <laughs> Yeah, the reason I called also the reason I called Gretchen uh, Gretchen health packs as well is because whereas with every other enemy you have to stun them uh, in order to you know get them into a state where you can get your health back off of them you can just press E and you'll just punch a Gretchen it'll explode you'll get a little bit of health. Yep, they they are your mobile health packs. The way it ends up working is that um, is that if you try to if you try to execute an enemy who's not stunned they will fight you off, and that's really, really bad because it, they sometimes do, uh, do it in such a way that it hurts really bad, and then even if it, even if they don't, you're wasting time in that animation. Yeah, and you can get stun-locked by some enemies, which can turn into a hilarious dump pile of orcs, because, yeah, you'll be fighting quite a lot of orcs, uh, and there's, like, maybe one to three of you in the area at the time. But, like this game gives you gives you plenty of uh, plenty of tools to play with. I mean the the switch from range to close combat is you know is perfect. And don't you don't you only have to you click basically the left mouse button to shoot and the right mouse uh, mouse button to uh, to cut with your your knife, right? Yep. But you've got the uh, like if you're using the keyboard like I am, you can just hit control and that'll temporarily zoom you in. Uh, so you can pretty much just zoom in, pull back fire again. days as a novice are behind you. Why do you still interpret the Codex so narrowly? I looked at its rules for guidance. We all do. But there are also benefits to thinking for yourself. Yes. And that's Leandros. He's going to be uh, <laughs> he's going to be our buzzkill for the evening, and also he's going to represent the typical view of what people think an ultramarine is like. It's like good cop, dumb cop. <laughs> we'll we'll meet buddy cop later. <laughs> and uh, the other like, and also in as well as being able to uh, like switch for range and everything with a with a quick 
quick press, depress. Uh, you've got your stun attack, which see sinks into any combo. You can pretty much just do one straight off. You can do one after one hit swing. You can do one after two swings, and then on top of that, you've got you've got your combat roll. You can, you've got a charge when you use your uh, your stun attack and oh, statue. Sedona's picked up local Imperial Guard communications. They survived under the shadow of that gun. I want to know how. Personal message cash involves with Thomas Alexander. Must be going back on. No snow here, that's for certain. Good by birds who are forged will under rock attack. The defenders are all dead ill to killing everyone on the planet. Fleets on the way, but we'll cut the wings out. Keep firing! Keep firing! And yeah, we got some guardsmen down here. They all die horribly. I've actually been able to keep one of those guys alive before because one of the orcs that's supposed to insta kill him glitched out and didn't run in. So that was me. <laughs> This game, this game has some some rare moments of bugs that, and and none of them are game breaking. All of them are quite funny, including this one. Yeah, uh, like ev like every time I've, I've seen I've seen something go wrong in this game, it's both harmless and amusing as hell. It, the the game very much reminds me of Dark Messiah in that way. Yeah, there. I, I I just I just liked how that one orc was like, oh, you didn't grab me. That's okay. I'll just throw myself down and explode my head for you. <laughs> The, the the biggest the biggest thing you, like that annoys the hell out of me like in this sequence is just that the combat knife does not have a very good combo to it. The, you get some amazing combos later on with your weapons, and the combat knife just does not have that many swings to it. It's because they're expecting that you won't use it for very long. And this is another thing that quite often happens if you're up against a wall and you see kill someone, you just sort of put them in put them in wall space and then just bury them. Eh, whatever. For the love of God. You have saved us. Rise, Guardsmen. You saved yourselves. We thought you did. We would be, my lord, if not for the Lieutenant. Where will we find this Lieutenant? At the front lines. Follow the trench network to the Lieutenant's command bunker. Carry on, Guardsmen. We rendezvous with Sedonus, then we find this Lieutenant. We need updated intel on the gun battery. And yes, you are going to hear the word Lieutenant a lot. Head out the upper level and continue through the plaza. The bunker is beyond that. I, I realize that that's technically the uh, the appropriate um, pronunciation for uh, for the the accent that they're going for, but it still messes with me every time I see it. Get off my legs! I can't feel my legs. I got to see a space marine before the end. Oh, good times to be a guardsman. <laughs> This is, uh, this is, this is very par for the course. That's a very unfortunate facet of Warhammer 40,000. Yep. Be being a guardsman is a very important, necessary role, considering half the galaxy wants to kill you. Uh, probably more than half the galaxy. Captain, I'm in position at a broken monument near the guard lines. Hey, I remember that monument. Workers must be met, despite alien incursion. The delinquency is the front of the machine gun. Sergeant, I see you found something to keep you busy. Worry not, Captain. I've saved some orcs for you. The orcs have got that gun well defended, no mistake. But typical orc behavior would be to dismantle or destroy the gun. And certainly not use it to keep our forces at bay. There's a strategy behind it. Their leader is no fool. This day is getting interesting. Sedonis is the best. During our jump to the surface. That was the orc ship I saw crash near here, I take it. Did he survive? If the Horde hasn't turned on itself, it's still under his control. And now, thankfully, we get ourselves our first proper close combat weapon of the game. The famous Chainsword. And it is... That's that's what happens when you swing three times and then you hit your. Uh, uh, see, look, I'm already having way too much fun with this thing. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're having exactly the right amount of fun. And that's what happens if you just like click all the way through. You just chainsaw everything <laughs> in like the general area, and bits just go flying. Look, see, I've just sawed that guy in half. There is a head and an arm missing. 
Everything about that was good and nothing was bad. You can do that sort of damage with the bolt gun too, which is which is nice because you know you're blowing these guys up. Like bits just fly off them. Relic did an amazing job uh, modeling damage on all of this stuff. Just it feels right. Yeah, the visceral impact of the of this game is very Warhammer, and it's it's the one of the first Warhammer games I've ever played where I can say that without reservation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, Space Marine has an interesting uh, story to its development. There was a, a hint that it was going to exist uh, when Games Workshop did this this poll a long, long time ago. And it also had hints towards a Warhammer 40,000 MMO, which would have been uh, Dark, Dark Millennium or whatever they were going to call it, but uh, obviously that game's never going to see the light of day anymore because of, <laughs> well, because of THQ folding. And the other, it was uh, Dawn of War 2. And then there was like mention of a third-person action game involving being a Ultramarine. Target that squig! <laughs> and, yep. Where there are orcs, there are squigs, and on a battle zone where there are squigs, they are usually strapped with explosives. <laughs> These guys can be a real... a real bugger. They're a pain in the ass, but they're a funny pain in the ass. Yes, they will... they will cause you much consternation, and if you do not have a full shield and full health, they will one-shot you. <laughs> That's just how it goes. But, you know, they also run alongside their allies. So another interesting thing about Look out, about ship. the original uh, Space Marine idea is that another company actually put forward a pitch for it. And it had, you know, gameplay ideas and everything like that. I just threw that grenade at myself, realized it jumped out of the way. Professional. Yep. Well, don't get blown up by them, all right. <laughs> Snatch that guy out of midair. I love this game. The, uh, the... The response uh, from a lot of people when this thing was leaked, it was leaked around the time of a... I can't remember if it was E3 or not, get out of the way, Leandris. It was around E3 or what, but... The bolt weapons were really anemic, it was... I don't know, it wasn't It wasn't the best looking. Uh, and as a result, like, I guess that company didn't get it, and THQ eventually decided, because I guess they were doing a tender to see if, you know they could get someone to do the game, they decided to just have Relic, who does Space Marines really well with the Dawn of War series, to uh, to just start up a start up a bunch of uh, projects related to it, and this is what we got, and I think it's an excellent game. And unfortunately, because of that initial <coughs> that initial trailer where they, they missed the visceral feel, everybody expected this game to suck when it came out, and there were a lot of people who were surprised when it didn't. It was, it, there was a a hilarious, uh, and if I can find it, I'll post it in the thread, but it's probably been ta taken down on YouTube like a million times by this point. But there was like this moment where you could get somebody down and just, like, it was a terrible QTA sequence where you're basically just you on a space marine punching each other. It just And it just looked really bad. <laughs> like, no offense to if anybody who designed that watches this, although I seriously doubt it. Yeah, honestly, even if even if uh, one of the developers of that of that is watching this right uh, right now, I can tell you as a developer myself, uh, we typically don't get uh, don't get too attached to that uh, that sort of thing. It's just like, yeah, the design of that was kept, that was kind of terribly thought out. And hello, here is our first very difficult enemy type, the gnome. Everything about this guy is good. Oh, he hits like a truck, and if you try and just like like beat stick him in a proper fight, he will kill you. So I have often found that one of the best things to do is to swing once, swing twice, and then have your teammates kill him before you can do the, the awesome sink kill. Don't worry, I get one later. <laughs> we thought we were done for. Where is your commander, guardsman? Inside, but the door is sealed. I believe they will let us through. Imperial Guard, we are Ultramarines. Open this door. Space Marines. That's only one way to get a door open. I should do that more often. Like yeah, I... Door and just say, we are ultramarines, open this door, or just see if it opens. I wonder if that would work at work. Reinforce their position, hold the line, and stay alive. I, Lieutenant. Thank the Emperor. 
Second Lieutenant Mira, 203rd Cadian Regiment. Captain Titus of the Ultramarines. You are in command. I'm all that's left, my lord. Unless my commanders rise from the grave. So far, they seem content to stay put. Lieutenant, the scouts have returned to forward base. How many? Two. Damn. I sent out ten. That damn gun. We don't have the numbers to make an assault. And as you might have seen, it's shooting down all our support vessels. That is why we are here. Leave the gun to us. Come with me, then. I should warn you, my lords. We've got a slight orc problem down here. Oh, Mir Mira is uh, going to be essentially our contact with the Imperial Guard over the course of this game. She's seriously one of the best female characters in the in the last in the last few years of video gaming. Yeah, uh, Sedonis's response of "You're in charge" is because. Uh, Technically, you won't often see a lieutenant in charge of an entire Only Imperial Guard force on a planet. Invictus at Manufactorum Ajakis. But that was two weeks ago, and we've lost contact with them. We need to reach that Titan. Your fastest route is across the rail bridge behind the gun complex. It leads directly to the western gates of the Manufactorum. Yeah, so now we're, we're a party of four. We've got Leandros, Sedonis, and Miro. Get me that field manual! Stuck on bloody Forge World and not a single tech priest in sight. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna see any tech priests. They're uh, they're all best presumed to be either dead or having gone and sealed themselves in a bunker where no orc can get them. <laughs> yeah, we. The orc war boss is. Very good at what he does, and this is what the Purity Seal unlocks. Essentially, it's Emperor's Fury Mode. Your health regens naturally. You don't need to stun someone to go into a uh, execution, and every attack you do will vis eviscerate somebody. Again, the, vis uh, the visceral feeling of that Fury Mode is just, it, it is indescribably awesome. Execution. <laughs> it is something to behold. Not in the disease ward, Dominus. What's wrong with her? Orc projectile to the leg, Magus Cassio. Amputations are down the hall. Very well, I shall prepare for the implant grafting. No implants. Just get rid of her leg and stitch her up fast. We are at war. Yeah, the uh. There are some Magos on a uh, Forge world whose specialization is biology, which is good because the workforce does tend to get injured and some of them you actually want to, you know, not throw away <laughs> in a pile because life sucks. Yeah, if uh, if there weren't like a billion green skins on the planet, I imagine she'd be, uh, she'd be a little bit more warm to the idea of giving, uh, giving the victim an implant. Yeah, wouldn't be a very fancy one though, she's just a worker. <laughs> I'm taking his stomping on orcs very seriously. I just don't, I just don't get tired of executions. Even when I'm like a full health, why why would you? Yeah, why would you not do it if you can? Just checking around for ammo and grenades. They do like to hide uh, audio logs and those things. Then heavy bolter. Heavy Bolter is a, is a weapon that, while primarily a Space Marine sort of affair, the Imperial Guard use it as well, because fire, the Heavy Bolter fires much larger explosive tipped rounds, <laughs> so it tends to just chew anything infantry up. And it's not just a turret weapon, although it has infinite ammo when you do that, it becomes much more powerful, and you just strut everywhere and have so much more fun. The yellow bar that's filling up and slowly turning orange then red, that's overheating. Uh, as you can see, you can run it out of ammo just as soon as you feed it. <laughs> this is such a fun gun to fire. It, it, it's re it's really just kind of relic a relic saying, "Okay, all right, you are just you are allowed to have all of the fun here." Mm -hmm. Yeah, they even politely exploded that uh, Imperial Guardsman so you could have it. <laughs> and the gun back. Now none of our ships can get past the 
Yeah, pretty pretty tough situation to be in. The Imperial Imperial Guard are uh, specialists at uh, digging in and not getting horribly murdered by things, or digging in and getting horribly murdered by things. Usually, want first one, then the other. Access granted. And here is the Stalker Bolter. We won't be getting to play with it just this time, uh, because the episode's running a bit long. So now after this cutscene, we'll be finishing it off. But we'll be playing with it quite a fair bit next episode. That's where the orcs breached the gun battery. We haven't been able to make it inside the wall. There just aren't enough of us. You have survived this long on your own, Lieutenant. You have done well. But you are no longer alone. We will retake the gun. You will get your reinforcements. I'll hold you to that. Yeah, it would, would suck a fair bit if you, you know, were sent down to claim the world, everything went horribly wrong, your entire command structure got annihilated, and then the Ultramarines come up, they help you out for a little bit, and then you get horribly murdered. That would that would really ruin your day, I think. <laughs> that, that would... It's like... I, you you think you had bad days. That's just, that's just like, man, now we are completely screwed. Uh, so, I, I, I do quite like the, the interactions between uh, Titus and uh, Mira, although a lot of Space Marines have trouble relating to and speaking to human beings uh, the general warriors respect idea that comes between space marines and imperial guard usually typifies their interaction you know you might have avatus from the dawn of war series who doesn't think very highly of them because he thinks they're cowards but titus is very impressed because he would have thought you know by his own measure a giant full orc invasion and you only managed to get like a relatively small number of guardsmen down onto the planet they're, they're still alive holding out and fighting when they're when most of their upper command has been completely annihilated that's impressive and you don't you don't talk down to someone for like that you give them you give them the full prop so Titus is one of the nice space marines <laughs> Titus as a whole is a really a really cool guy and you know that that's that's another one of, one of the things that I don't I don't feel like they got enough credit for is they're just like, oh well Titus is boring it's like no, his entire idea is that he's actually a relatable super soldier. Everybody else, everybody else is like halfway to crazy. Yeah, it it kind of it kind of defines their roles, and we'll probably talk about it a bit much, a bit more later on. But there's a reason why Titus is the way he is, and is a captain. I mean, not not every space marine who just lives forever ends up getting as high a rank as possible. There are some who are career sergeants. Sedonis definitely seems like a career sergeant. We'll talk about more about that once he gets more. Leandro as well. We'll we'll talk about him when he gets to it as well. Because oh, there's Leandros. a lot we can say about Leandros. There's always somebody who has to be a stick in the mud. He's like he's like if you took all the fun and impetuous out of Thaddeus and then just had like a newbie. Yeah, that's he, just that's what he is. He re he remind he reminds me a lot of of like the most depressing sort of nerd that you knew in high school and college. <laughs> Guys, we're gonna get in trouble. But the, the funny thing is, is he's still a space marine, so he is still one of the most badass human beings in the Warhammer 40,000 setting, because he managed to firstly do something, and with the Ultramarines it's typical, typically uh, trials of combat and things like that. So he, he survived fighting a lot of people uh, who were also really good at fighting, then survived the entire process of having organs put in him so, uh, and everything like that, which kills quite a lot of people. And then he also survived scout training. So he, he's, he's, sort of, he's sort of one of the whiniest badasses that we'll see. It's just that weird sort of, you know, I don't quite get it, but that's, that, that's how it goes with him. The whiniest badass. That's, that, that's the greatest <laughs> way to sum him up, dude. Yeah, so that was the first episode. As you can see, there is a very large gun that we're going to have to trash the hell out of, but the fun will not be stopping there. And that is all going to be happening as we round up the uh, the first part of the game. And uh, I have been the last Robokai. And I've been Cool Guy. And we'll see you all next time when we go to take down the big gun and then ride the big train.